it is often said that observing a quantum particle changes its state. In this video I would like to go in detail on what exactly that means. To do so we will talk about transformations of vectors. Now if you are unfamiliar with vectors, I recommend first watching part 1, link in the description. Transformations map the vectors of one vector space to another. As an example, a very common transformation is one where, when applied to any vector, that vector gets rotated by some amount. This rotation transformation has some neat properties. 1. Adding two vectors and then applying the rotation to the result is the same thing as applying the rotation to each vector individually and then adding the result. Two, scaling a vector and then rotating gives the same result as applying the rotation to the original vector and then scaling it. In short, rotating a linear combination of vectors is the same as the linear combination of rotating each vector. A transformation that has that property is called a linear transformation. That is to say, a linear transformation is a transformation where the transformation of a linear combination of vectors gives the same result as the linear combination of the transformation of each vector. A good way to visualize linear transformations in two dimensions is to start with vectors stemming outwards from the origin in a circle. Applying the linear transformation to the vectors gives a nice overview of its effect on the vector space. As mentioned in part 1, for a given basis, all vectors in the vector space can be represented by a linear combination of the basis vectors. From the definition of linear transformations, we can see that the transformation of any vector can be represented as the linear combination of the transformed basis vectors. This means that we can uniquely describe any given linear transformation simply by what happens to the basis vectors for a given basis. If we know how the basis vectors transform, then we know how any other vector transforms. For some linear transformations, you might notice that some vectors seem to change direction less than other vectors. This leads to an interesting question. For a given linear transformation, are there vectors that don't rotate at all and only get longer or shorter? It turns out that, yes, such a vector exists for some linear transformations. For a given linear transformation, a vector that doesn't change direction is called an eigenvector of the transformation, and the amount the eigenvector gets scaled by is called an eigenvalue. I also want to talk about the scalar projection of one vector onto another. The scalar projection tells us how long you'd have to go in the direction of the second vector to be at a right angle from the first one. This means that if the two vectors have the same direction, then the scalar projection will just give the magnitude of the first vector. Also, if the two vectors have a right angle to one another, then the scalar projection will be zero. Intuitively, one might imagine the projection as the length of the shadow that one vector casts onto the other. There is a similar concept called the inner product. The inner product of two vectors is one vector projected onto the second, multiplied by the magnitude of the second vector. The inner product is a very useful concept, in part because the inner product of two vectors a and b gives the same result as the inner product of b and a. Note as well that if vector b has a magnitude of 1, then the inner product of the two vectors will equal the projection of a onto b. So what does this have to do with quantum physics? Well, let me tell you about observables. An observable is some physical quantity that could be measured on the system, such as position or momentum or energy. In quantum physics, much like states are represented by vectors, observables are represented by linear transformations, and the possible values of the observable are the eigenvalues of the transformation. As an example, suppose we have a system where there are two different positions that a particle can be at that we will call x equals 1 and x equals 2. Position, being a physical quantity, 
has an associated linear transformation that we will write as capital X. When a measurement of the position is made, the result will be random, having some probability of being any of the possible positions. These possible positions are actually the eigenvalues of the position operator. That is to say, the two eigenvalues are 1 and 2, corresponding to the eigenvectors that are the quantum physical vectors representing each position of the particle. From part 1, we know that each state is represented by some vector, that is a member of the vector space of possible states of the system. Given some state vector, let's call it A, the probabilities of measuring each eigenvalue can be found by projecting this state vector onto the eigenvector corresponding to each eigenvalue. Squaring the result of the projection gives the probability of measuring that particular value. Note here that quantum state vectors always have a magnitude of 1, meaning that the projection can be found by taking the dot product. We can write the state A as a linear combination of the eigenvectors of a linear transformation, in this case the position. As it turns out, the scaling factors in the linear combination is exactly the projections of A onto the eigenvectors. This occurs because eigenvectors of quantum physical linear transformations are always 90 degrees from one another. That the state can be written as a linear combination of vectors representing measurable states is the exact conclusion that we made in part 1. But not only are the eigenvectors the only measurable states, but when we do so, the state changes to be the eigenvector measured. So by measuring a property of the system, we actually change the system. This is what's being referred to when people say that observing a particle changes the outcome of some experiment. By observing a particle, we necessarily change its state to be an eigenvector of whatever quantity we are observing. But this doesn't just affect the observable that we are measuring. Since we are changing the state itself, the projection of the state onto the eigenvectors of any observable will change. This means that, as an example, possible values of the momentum will have different probabilities if we measure the momentum after we first measure the position. That's all for this part, but as a teaser for the next episode, let me mention one final thing. Given a state, let's first apply a linear transformation corresponding to some physical quantity, and then project the resulting vector onto the original state vector. Calculating this out, one finds that it equals the sum of the probability of measuring each basis state multiplied by the value of each state. This is an expression that is known as the expectation value of the quantity for the system. And once again, thank you for watching.